thanks for coming. Hi, I'm here to give you a little bit of an update on things open science. We have some new um, developments that are quite exciting, um, which I want to share with you. Read and publish and open access funding. It is always a bit strange if you have to talk about money, but um, money it is for, for this talk. Um, I'm sure that all of you know and understand that publishing, all publishing costs money and uh, open access is no exception to that and as open access develops um, there are a variety of financing models that have uh, that have taken hold. Just for your orientation I have put up the four major paths to um, open access publishing here on the slide. Today I will be focusing on open access gold that is the immediate access to the version of record to the publishers version of your manuscript and in within open access gold the variety that takes APC so that costs you as the researcher as the author article processing charges I'll also be mentioning open access hybrid gold which is that you um, publish in open access so your version of record is immediately available at publication digitally for free um, for that you have to pay APCs um, article processing charges but the entire journal is still a subscription title and that means that of course you have the publisher making money twice once from you buying out your manuscript to be published in open access and from the libraries and the subscribers to that uh, journal will pay for the whole for the whole issue so i'll be talking about those two things and there are some developments here apcs mean that you have to provide the financing for the publication cost to the publishers uh, when your when your manuscript goes online for free. It makes sense in a way that someone has to foot the bill. And um, in the last years, APC, the APC model has developed to become the favorite business model for the publishers. It's relatively easy. It basically shifts the financial burden from the subscription holder or from the reader to you as the author that doesn't take too much too much doing on the part of the um, of the publishers to get that done however the problem is that it was it was a bit of a cowboy's market because um, the publisher pricing on APCs and uh, particularly with hybrid open access is anything but transparent nobody knows really why some um, journals by a publisher will charge you twelve hundred dollars for publishing an open access journal and the same publisher will charge you three thousand five hundred dollars for uh, publishing an article in another journal so um, it was it was anything but transparent and that has brought about uh, some developments which resulted ultimately in the read and publish deals that we are looking at now Two of those developments I'd like to mention. One is that um, research funders um, started to be very skeptical about funding hybrid because they obviously realized that uh, publishers made money twice. So the SNF, for example, said, OK, we still recognize that publishing in open access hybrid means that the research results appear in open access, but, um, but we don't like the business model, so we're not going to pay for it. And the other development is that library consortia, usually on the national level, started to, started to become tougher in the negotiations with, with the publishers um, to conclude some, some subscription deals. And they are asking for more. And it's good because there's a lot, a lot of money um, involved in these deals. And it's good that the library consortia are trying to push for, for to get more for their money, really. Well, it's not their money, it's taxpayers' money, but you know what I mean. So um, these, these developments together um, brought about the thing that, the new thing that, we, that I'm here to introduce you to, um, read and publish deals. So how does this work? It's actually, it's actually relatively simple and it does pretty much what it says on the can. It is uh, a read and publish deal. It's basically a big license deal um, that has evolved to include the subscription. So the library will still be able to um, offer you access to all the all the titles in a publisher's portfolio. But on top of that subscription, it also pays for the APCs for open access publishing from the, um, the institution that has this deal. 
In other words, you can read the stuff that a publisher brings out and you can also publish in those journals if you are a faculty member of an institution that uh, that has a deal with the with a publisher as part of a consortium that has negotiated this deal what what does that look like for you in practice um, i put together uh, a couple of examples here on the left hand side you see a sample workflow that we received from one of the big publishers for you it means here the process starts, the read and publish process starts for you when your article is accepted. So once your article is accepted for publication by a publisher, and that would be here, right, they will get in touch with you and say, okay, you can now choose whether you want to have this as an open access publication or if you want to be in a subscription journal in closed access. Um, if you choose open access, they will, um, actually before that, they will identify you as being eligible for an open access deal um, so that they can make this offer to publish in open access. And the way they get to identify you is either by the affiliation that you, um, that you enter, right? Your, in, your university or your institution, you see that on the right hand side, there's such an interface, such a sample interface, uh, where you can choose where you belong and they will see if, if they have, the publisher will see if they have a deal with that institution and or your campus email right so if you're if you have a unib.ch um, email address then they will know that you're eligible and or the ip range from which you access your author interface on the publisher's website so any and all of these parameters will tell the um will tell the publisher that you are eligible for an open access publication that will be paid for through the read and publish deal with the library once the publisher um, has has decided okay we can go open access that person is at the university of bern we're fine and from our point of view, that's a done deal. Um, the university library then gets one more chance to look at it and say, yes, this person is indeed someone from our faculty um, who is indeed an author associated with the University of Bern, and we approve that, right? So and if you're not, then we can also reject it. And only then is the article published online. So for you, basically for, for researchers, what this means is that you will have um, from the moment that you that you that you notified that your um, publication is your article is accepted for publication, you can then jump through a few interfaces such as this one. It's one of a few. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward process where you enter some information, and then this whole thing goes forward. Where are we in Switzerland with this whole situation? Currently, the Swiss Library Consortium, which has been working on these deals since 2018, uh, was able to conclude a deal with Elsevier and with Springer Nature. So Elsevier is already operational. That means that you can make use of these open access deals. You can publish an open access with Elsevier journals, not all of them, but most of them. And you don't have to worry about having to find the money to pay for the APCs because that's covered by the deal. This, um, this link here is live. So if you, if you download the uh, presentation later on from the website that uh, Ali mentioned, you can, you can use those links that I put in here. Um, alternatively, it's the open access website at the library and under the, under the tab financial support that you see out here, uh, you find all the different ways that we help with, um, with open access financing questions. And amongst other things, I don't know if you see, it's a bit faint. Um, here is publishing with Elsevier. Spring and Nature, the contract is signed and we are now in the process of setting up the workflow. I hope that we will be online and operational by the end of summer, um, which means, but definitely by fall, um, we should be able to take in, um, uh, or rather Springer will be able to take in your applications in their journals. Again, not all Springer journals, but most of them, the whole nature group is of course exempt, but you will find a list on the, on the webpage, just as, as, as we have done with, uh, with Elsevier. The third massive publisher that um, the negotiations are ongoing um, with is Wiley. Wiley, um, they hope to be able to conclude a deal by the end of the year. 
So I reckon early 2021 is when this one is going to go operational. There are a few others that the consortium is trying to negotiate. There are some, some learned societies and uh, T Taylor and Francis and some other publishers. We will see what the next years will bring, but this is definitely not the only three deals that are going to go through. So there's more of that to come. If you have any questions pertaining to the um, administrative part of this or how to, for example, find your way through the Elsevier interfaces and so on, you can get in touch with our colleagues at eSupport in the library. They are the specialists who are looking after these deals. Now, there is, of course, also a lot of publishers who, most publishers, in fact, who are not part of a reading publishing deal yet. And researchers often find themselves um, facing open access charges. And the question is, well, who, who is going to pay for this? Where am I going to find the money to cover my $1,200 APC or my 3,400 euro APC for journal XYZ? And until now, there were a variety of um, possibilities. Either you had funding um, from the SNF or the EU, for example, and uh, these funders cover APCs um, generously. So um, that's not necessarily an issue. Uh, but if you don't, if you, if you come from a, from, a, from a, if you have a research publication that is not uh, the result of a, of a funded project, then maybe you're lucky enough to be at an institute that has that kind of cash uh, in the kitty to, to cover your APCs. And if it's not the case, then, and that's unfortunately often the case with, uh, particularly with younger researchers, then you might have to look and see if you pay, if you pay that out of your own pocket. And to address this issue, I'm very happy to say the university has uh, approved after several years of fighting for it, uh, or we fought the university finally approved it, um, the university has approved an open access phone that uh, went online and went live last month. So this is really, really new. And what we do is we cover APCs beyond these read and publish deals, up to 1500 Swiss francs for APCs. If you have a book project, you can get up to 2,000 um, Swiss francs. So it's important to note that there is a cap on this. This is not a fund that, um, that covers any given APCs, but there is a cap of 1,500 on it. But 1,500 is going to cover a lot of mileage, I think, with most APCs. Please note, and this is very important, the eligibility criteria uh, say that we are not funding hybrid open access. We are like the SNF and like other funding instruments um, and institutions, we don't think that hybrid is a, is a legitimate business model. There is no need to throw taxpayers' money twice at a publisher. So hybrid is uh, not going to be supported by this fund. Again, these links are live. You can find the application process and conditions described again on our website, Open Access, um, under financial support. And the relatively simple application form is also linked here, so you can, you can find it, you can find your way there, and we are going to try and answer your request as quickly as we can. As ever, if you have any questions pertaining to the topics here or anything pertaining to open science, then we're happy to help. You can find us um, either at the email address here or you can check out our website, which is quite extensive and has an awful lot of information all around this uh, and many, many other open science issues.